listening to the IFF TV podcast. Irish Football Fan TV, this is our match preview, the Republic of Ireland are back in action this Thursday and Gary is going to be at the game so we're going to preview it here before he heads off and yeah, Gary, how are you feeling ahead of this one? All good Paul, uh, looking forward to it, looking forward to another Irish game and hopefully and I think definitely uh, Stephen Kenny's first win as a manager, please God, but um I, I, it's a great opportunity. He's had a week to work with the squad. I know we've lost a few of the players with injury, and that was to be expected at the end of a long, hard season. But the players we have, the squad we have, they're all playing at a much higher level than Andorra. And I think it's an ideal game. It's an ideal opportunity to to win a match, get that, that monkey off his back. And uh, if we beat if we beat Andorra, then... Uh, hopefully we can look forward with confidence to the Hungary game next week and the, the important qualifiers in September. Yeah, I think I think this is a game that most fans could be more optimistic about. I mean, if you don't beat Andorra, I don't think there's any hope for you. So, I look, I do, I do, think, us, I do think we should beat Andorra. Um, I mean, they're ranked 158 in the world. Now, I, don't, I know and I appreciate rankings go out the windows in games, but... At this stage, as you mentioned, he's got a week to work with the players. Um, there seems to be a bit of a feel-good factor around the squad from watching videos and stuff like that. Um, we've got new players obviously coming in, which we'll probably touch on in a little bit. But he, I don't know if you saw as well the video Seamus Coleman did with uh, Anthony Barry congratulating him on winning the Champions League with um, with Chelsea and stuff like that. So there, there seems to be a quite a good buzz. And I know Seamus is out for this game, but he's still hanging around the, the camp and, you know, providing his leadership around the camp, which is great to see as well. Yeah, it's actually great to see Seamus staying in the camp, even though uh, he, he can't play on Thursday. Um, because he's he only is had our a captain. boy recently as well. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, look, it, it would have been very easy for him to to say it, it, it's been a long, hard season. He's a seasoned professional. Seamus is going to start in, in Faro against Portugal if he's available in September, no matter what. And... Uh, so it is a good sign that he's actually staying in the camp. He's working with the younger players because it is a very young camp now uh, with so many of the senior players ha having pulled out. So that is great to see. Uh, Anthony Barry will obviously be on a high as well. And uh, you can see he does. He's uh, We've talked about him before that he's a real um, perfectionist. He works on so many set pieces, even simple things like throw-ins, etc. And uh, the credit to him for some of our goals can, can, go, can go to him. And it'll be interesting to see. Um, it's great that he went straight from Portugal as well to, to, to Girona for the, the camp. Uh, would have been easy enough for him to have taken the week off as well and, and gone celebrating with his, with his squad. But... Um, yeah, so it is great to see the, pe the people there. There is a, a nice buzz around the camp. And uh, I just said, please, God, we get a win on Thursday. Yeah, I think as well as that, obviously, you got to remember the McLean goal against Qatar. It seemed as though that was kind of a masterminded by Anthony Barry as well. So I think people people shouldn't underestimate the, I suppose, the... On the he's on an important... The... Yeah, he's an important guy, Paul, because I know, I mean, Chelsea... It's paid a lot of money to get him, and there were a lot of clubs actually interested in him. And uh, he, he's quite a young guy, and he's still in his thirties. But he's an obsessive, and he works so hard uh, on on set pieces, on things in the game, and uh, they're they're absolutely absolutely crucial. And if you look at things and look at these massive clubs in the Premier League now in the Champions League, I mean, every tiny advantage. Is important to them, and as you say, that goal in depression was uh, was straight off the the training ground from Anthony Barry. But it's a real coup for Stephen to actually have him uh, as part of his backroom team, and uh, maybe we'll see some of the evidence of it in the next couple of games. 
Yeah, as well as that, because you got to remember when Damien Duff left, everyone was like going, oh my God, no, like, how are we going to replace him or whatever? So it was a very shrewd piece of business by whoever did get him in, whether it was like the FAI or Stephen got onto him and convinced him or whoever. Um, but yeah, I think he will be you know a big part for us going forward. And if you can help us mastermind goals in situations where you might not be expecting it, even better. So yeah, um, and, and maybe different ways of scoring that maybe we're not used to seeing from Ireland, like smart, uh, you know, set pieces and stuff like that, like the the Qatar game. Well, I'm not getting hung up on the, the one thing, but he wasn't in there that long. That was his first camp to work with him back then, and we saw seen signs out of uh, out of the goal. I think that was the only no no because we had the two goals against Serbia, but um obviously the Luxembourg got and then it was the Qatar game and we got the goal and that. But uh, yeah, it's it's exciting to see what he can do with this squad. But uh, I suppose just kind of on on on, Dar- on Andorra's form, I can't speak this morning. But uh, on Andorra's form, like you obviously have their form there. Um, do you want to just run us through there really quickly on kind of their form? And you know, I'm not expecting to hear miracles going on with them anyway. Well, Paul, the form the form pretty much has been awful. I mean, they're look, and it's as expected. They're a small country. They're in the same group uh, with England for World Cup qualifying. So they had three games in March. They lost at home to Albania, 1-0. They were well beaten in Poland, 3-0, and suffered a 4-1 home defeat by Hungary. But, I mean, that was following on from the Nations League when the results were... last result in the Nations League was a 5-0 home defeat by Latvia. They were beaten 3-1 by Malta, lost home and away to the Faroe Islands, and uh, did pick up a couple of draws when they, they played Latvia and Malta in their first couple of games. But... Look, they're, they're one of the minnows of European football. Uh, anytime we've played them before, we've beaten them reasonably comfortably. We had a we had a scare 20 years ago in the, the Aviva. They actually took the lead. Um, but even if you go back to the, the last time we met, which were in the qualifiers for Euro 2012, uh, we beat them comfortably. We, we went, went away and beat them uh, 2-0. We were two goals in the first 10 minutes. So it was really game over and it was... The, the squad were taking it easy after that. Um, in fact, the big story of that trip was actually the tickets because we had thousands of fans trying to get into the game and people were watching it from outside and everything. But um, obviously there won't be that issue on, on Thursday. Um, it, it's, uh, nobody can travel, etc. cetera. But um, it's, look, they're, they're one of the minnows of European football. We would always be expected to beat them. and. Uh, I really can't see any th- anything else than an Irish win. Anything else really would be disastrous. But I think we will beat them. I think we've had a, a week of really good preparation. Squad have been together. Uh, Stephen's been working with them for, for the week now. And I think they'll be raring to go on Thursday. And uh, I can't see anything other than... Maybe I'm just being uh, too optimistic or whatever. But we, we, no, we really actually realistic. need it. Yeah, we really need this win as well. I mean, it's really important that we win the match. I mean, and normally you wouldn't be saying that about end-of-season friendlies. I mean, I remember some of the trips to the US uh, going back a few years, and look, we took a couple of tankings by by Portugal and Mexico, but they, they weren't really, they didn't really matter as much. It was a chance to try out a couple of players. Now, This clearly, this extended training camp is a chance to try out players, but it's also a chance to get a win. And uh, I have compared it already to the the two years ago, Stephen took the under-21s to Toulon, and he had a a lot of time to work with them. And it was a really successful tournament. We got to the semifinals of of that very prestigious tournament up against a lot of older players in many cases because some countries brought their under-23s instead of under-21s. And we did really well. And that followed on into the under-21 qualifying campaign. So I'm just hopeful that you have a good training camp here and hopefully uh, get a win on Thursday. The Hungary game, we can go on and talk about that at another time. But then follow that on into the autumn when we've got some really crucial and very tough qualifiers, frankly. Yeah, but I think, look, as you said, um, and I think, you know, you're saying there, you think it's... You might be too. We should be beating Andorra. It's as simple as that. There's yeah, no excuses. No, we should be beating these. Absolutely, hundred percent. It, it has to be a win, no matter what. If he if he doesn't get this win, 
he should be looking at himself and saying, you know, what am I doing with myself? So I, I, I fully expect us to win, and I think we will. And I want us to win badly for Stephen's sake. Um, and I suppose for the squad's sake in many, in many ways as well. You just kind of want to see us get a win. It's been so long since we've seen a good win. And I look, look, I wouldn't just like a win. I would like to see us win comfortably. Like I don't want to be scraping a 1-0 win over Andorra. That's not what I want to see. It's not what fans want to see. I want to see maybe 2-3, 4-0 um, or 4-1, whatever. I wouldn't care if they scored. But at the same time, I'd like to see... Um, and this was going to be my next point. Is kind of just of the of the newer players that got brought into the squad. Who would you be most, uh, I suppose, excited to see? Because you've got someone you you'd know quite well from his Limerick days in Chidesi Ogbonna Ogbonne, Sorry. Um, then you have Jamie McGrath as well. You would have seen in the League of Ireland as well through Pats and through Dundalk. Um, you've got Quivine Keller who who'd probably get a run at some stage. Um, you obviously seen him through Liverpool and so on. Um, and there might be other players there that you might be looking forward to see as well. Well, I will admit my bias on this one, Paul, because I am desperate to see Dozy Ogbene, uh, or Dozy, Che Dozy, but Dozy as we knew him in uh, in Limerick. And uh, sort of I'd love really. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. I, I'm obviously very biased on this, Paul, but I'm desperate to see Dozy Ogbene. Uh, get a run I'd, I'd love to see him play in the green shirt uh limerick uh limerick man so proud of him he was a fantastic player and it was great to see him in the markets field he was playing playing superbly i was delighted for him to get his move across channel and i'm absolutely delighted he's got called into the squad and uh i'd love to see him get a run out um he has bags of talent obviously it's a big step up from the championship to international football but I'd love to see him get a chance. Uh, apart from that, yes, Jamie McGrath, he's had a fantastic season with St. Mern. Uh, he was a great player, as you said, with Pats and Dundalk in the past. And uh, it's great for him to get his opportunity. I mean, he scored something like 17 goals from midfield. So playing really well on top of his game, and I think he will get a chance. Uh, the goalkeeping one, I think Cuevin Kelleher would have started had he been fit for the March games. Now, Gavin Bazunu is the man with the short. You'd have to think they'll get a game each. Um, I, I don't know. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm excited to see Cuevin Kelleher play in an Ireland short. And uh, I think that's going to happen over these two games. And uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. It'll be interesting to see who Stephen's number one is in Faro on the 1st of September. Um, but uh, let's see how it pans out for these two games as well. And uh, another man is, is Danny Mandreo, who's um, just been probably the standout player in the League of Ireland this season. And I know this is going to be controversial because it won't go down well with Bose fans, but and it, he wasn't very popular when he moved across the city. But And, and I think people were maybe a, a little concerned about his form in 2020 that it certainly wasn't as good as he was in 2019. Well, he's been absolutely superb this season for Shamrock Rovers. And like Dozy Ogbene, he's playing in, in a problem position for us in that he's got the creativity and the talent. Now, again, as I said, it's a massive step up to go from Shamrock Rovers to, to international football. But I, I think he will get a chance, and he has bags of talent. And... Uh, Hopefully he can show that, and I'm sure it'll be a big one for Shamrock Rovers fans uh, if he gets capped. And see, I think I think it's interesting with Mandreo because he has players in the squad that he would know quite well from his time at Brighton. I mean, Shane Duffy um, would have. I'm definitely positive about this that he would have looked out for him, Jason Malumbi and Aaron Connolly, and they were all very good close mates at the time, playing at, Bright at Brighton in the U team, and. Um, you know, obviously with Shane Duffy in the squad, back in the squad, looks like he's enjoying himself as well. He put up a post on his Instagram saying, my happy place playing for Ireland. So you can see, like, he just loves playing for Ireland. And again, it's probably an opportunity for someone like Shane as well to put himself back in the shop window if he has a couple of good games over this um, this double uh, game window. So I think it'd be interesting for him maybe to get a move off the back of that. But I think he'll be a good kind of person to look out for, Mandreo. And then you've got Jason Malumbi as well, who'll be in the squad as well. 
helping out. I know Aaron Connolly's not in the squad this time around, but again, look, they're, they're all close friends, and I I know even last week Jason Malumbi and Dan Mandrew met up in Dublin, and they were out getting food and stuff like that. So they're really close mates. They grew up in digs together in at Brighton and stuff like that. So you know they're all a, you know a tight knit group, and obviously. Shane looks out for Jason and Aaron and stuff like while they were there. So there's, there is all that thing there. So he has that little bit of familiarity there. And I think as well, you know, with Stephen and, and stuff like that, if I've known him probably around the league and stuff like that and the other 21s. He has that familiarity. I think he can go in there and maybe express himself. I definitely think he's improved since going to Shamrock Rovers, whether that's the influence of uh, Stephen Bradley and Stephen McPhail, Glenn Cronin and so on in the Shamrock Rovers setup, but I think he's he's definitely matured and you know he doesn't react to challenges and all maybe like he used to and stuff like that and he's not as rash I remember I remember watching a game where he was really rash and probably should have been sent off the game against Shells where he probably should have been sent off for some rash tackles and he ended up scoring I think two goals and a 3-2 comeback win four balls um but I think he gets kicked up and down the park for Shamrock Rovers every week and every time I see him now and he doesn't get bothered and then he ends up probably scoring the winner. Um, I think St. Pass fans might have a little bit of a a, a Barney with you over that saying that uh, he's a standout player because I know that they think Chris Forrester's been but I suppose in many ways Dan Madrid definitely the young player um, so far this season who's been really, really good. Jamie McGrath, it will be interesting to see if we get a penalty if he takes it or not considering the, the form he's in. I would love to see him uh, I mean, I can't even remember the last time we got a penalty, but I'd love to see him, you know, get a penalty and score it. I just think he's just this one lad who you just look at and he just kind of reminds me of Seamus Coleman in many ways. Like he just does everything right. He says the right things. It just seems like a great lad. Uh, he's been on the podcast with me before and he, he's just a genuine nice lad. And you just want to see him do well. I think he'll get a big move off the back of this. Has he a, a good international window? Again, he's worked with Stephen Kenny. I think he's leveled up since he's left. So, excuse me, since he's left Dundalk, he's more in the first team. He starts more. He's not as injured as much. He's adding goals. He's adding assists. Um, he's a key part of that Saint Mirren team that done so well. In you know, if you look at the size of the club and so on. Um, and then Ogbeni, I have never. I'm not going to lie. I've never really seen him play. So that's kind of why I'm interested to see. Obviously, the right wing position is a position that we don't really have anyone nailed down on that side um, with bags of pace that can get down the line and maybe take a couple of players on. Because we, how many times have we seen players just put in that position who probably aren't natural wingers and don't really do it? Callum Robinson gets put out there and he never really plays well for Ireland in that position. In my, that's just my opinion anyway. I don't think he's really played a good game. Like he's good at chasing the ball down and stuff like that. But as far as a real out and out winger who's going to stay high, press from the front, and just get in behind and you know create chances for the strikers and so on. But I think as well, there's players even in there like Leo Connor, who I know played under Mick McCarthy. I'd be excited to see if he can get in because Matt Doherty's going to be there as well. So there's between the two, but it's good to have these options. And just see who we might actually go with. Like even when I'm doing the start 11 show later on, like... I'm just kind of looking around going, I can actually have some fun with this team because there is so many different options this time around and there's not so many injuries. So we can actually kind of look through it and go, oh, we can have him. John Egan's obviously back in the team as well, which I think would be massive too. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm actually quite positive going into this game and, you know, it's it's always nice to have good young players coming through and see how they'll they'll get on, you know, because we do still have players to come back. Like, you know, Jack Burns uh, running on the treadmills yesterday. So he'll be eager to get back, obviously, in September, hoping he has a good pre-season. Obviously, the Seamus, who, who might be back for the Hungary game, I know he's sticking around to try and see if he can overcome a hamstrings train for that, but uh, he'll obviously be big come September, all going well injury-wise. And then, um, you're just looking around the squad, thinking, you know, even with the goalkeeper situation, Bazunu, Keller, we don't know who's going to play. So it's, it's exciting in many ways, I think. As you said, I think they'll get a game each. It'll be interesting to see who gets the big one against Hungary. Because if that's Keller's first start, you'd be kind of going, oh, you know, that, that could be a tough start. Whereas if he went in against Andorra, um, you know, it's obviously not as, not as pressurised. Even though it's a friendly, you know, they're going to the Euro, so it might not be as, uh, as pressurised. But then do you say, do you throw Bazunu in against Hungary as well? So look, there's big decisions to be made by the manager. That's what he's paid to do. So I, I am excited. Um, I just, just want to see us win the game, man. That's all I want yeah. to see. 
I know. Look, it, 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 we must win. It, it is just, um, unfortunately, I know it's only a friendly and it's an, an end of season training camp, but it has become a, a must win. It's Stephen's 12th game and uh, the only other Irish manager that went 12 games without a win was Mick Meegan back from 1969 to 71. Now, Mick was a fantastic player and manager. And uh, and even I was just looking at the games. I mean, his 12 games without a win were, were against the likes of Italy twice, uh, West Germany, Austria, Sweden, Denmark. Uh, although Denmark weren't as good in those days, in fairness. But it was all against uh, 12 games against quality opposition. And unfortunately, he didn't get a 13th game. Uh, and that was a bad time for Irish football. We actually went five years from 1967 to 72 without a win. So uh, we, it is an absolute must win because we cannot go, I think, 12 games without a win. Uh, and particularly when the next two games are Hungary away and Portugal away. Yeah, exactly. I, look, I, I would... If we could be Andorra and then we'll focus on Hungary after that. Yeah, but I mean, the focus, the media focus has to be get a win. I was going to say three points, <laughs> but obviously not. <laughs> um, get a win and just just build on it. Build the confidence on that. And, and you know, you never know if you can come away and get a, get a decent result against Hungary. Then we're going into games, you know, in, in September going, OK, well, look, we can score goals. We scored two against Serbia. Um but we can't score goals and we can't win games. And we have that, oh, he hasn't won a game yet. That's gone now. Hopefully, oh, all going well on Thursday. But, uh, yeah, just just lastly, just to finish off on your match prediction, um, I want scoreline and scorers, well, if you've got more than one. Okay, yeah, I have got more than one. I think we're going to win 2-0. That's my prediction. Uh, scorers is going to be very tough because even trying to pick... Uh, the the starting lineup will be quite difficult, but uh, I'm going to go with Connor Horahan and Adam Eda. As is uh, Connor Horahan free kick. Yeah, well, I mean he's 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 good in set pieces, so and he's he, uh, he scored quite a few goals this year as well. So um, having said that, the, the the scorers may not even be playing in the game, obviously with the squad that's there, but. Uh, I'm going to go with a 2 0 win and Conor Horan and Adam Eda. I don't expect Horan to play just because he's just off the back of the, the playoffs. But look, if he does play and he yeah. does score, happy days. So I'm not disputing yeah. that. Um, for me, I'm going to go 3 0. I just want I just, I just want to be optimistic and I want to see us you know, score a half full of goals and, and just be happy. Um, I'd like to see Adam Eda get one. Um, see, I'm kind of saying I'd like to get them because we don't, again, you don't know who's going to play. Um, I'd like to see Adam Eda. Um I'd like to see Troy get one as well. I know we didn't actually yeah. touch on him, but he's in the squad. I'd like to see Troy get one. And then I would like to see Big Duffy getting a header um, and 3-0 win. So, yeah, the two the two young lads up top. And then, obviously, Big Shane because he's had a disastrous season. And, yeah, I'd just like to see him come back in and do well in the side. So that would be yeah, yeah, I think we will play some of the experienced players because um, it's probably better for the younger players that they do play with some of the more experienced players. So you're right about Connor having played uh, played at the weekend, played on, on Saturday. But um, I, I think the, the, we will see the likes of John Egan, Shane Duffy, Connor Horan. Okay, maybe he, he won't start or might come off the bench on Thursday. I think he'll definitely play in Budapest if that's the case then. Because um, I, I don't think Stephen's going to go out with too much of an experimental side because he is certainly going to want to win the match and make sure he wins the match. Yeah, that's why I think McLean will probably play left back ahead of Ryan Manning because I just think, again, you're talking about experience. But like, if Manning gets an opportunity here, I know he's another player we didn't... Because there is literally so many players in the squad that um, have an opportunity to really cement the place ahead of the games in September. Uh, the left back spot is probably up for grabs just because Ender Stevens hasn't been able to maintain that level of fitness in which he did the previous year. But I mean, if Ender's fit, by all means, he's first choice for me anyway. Uh, then you have obviously um, the centre back position. You you know we didn't even touch on Darrow O'Shea, you know as well, who seems to have cemented his place. And I wouldn't be surprised if he went with Darrow O'Shea and John Egan and Shane Duffy didn't even play. But if that is the case, then I'd like to see Darrow get the. The old header at the back post to to seal the three 0 win. 
Uh, but look, I, I'm excited. There's, um, it's a, it, this is a real transitional period for the squad. Um, I know we've talked about transition periods in the past, but this is a real one because we are starting to see a lot of those under-21 players start, start making a step up. And there's been a whole load of them that have made that step up from this 21s to the senior team. Probably thanks to Stephen Kenny. Because how often over the years have we been crying out to want to see underage players getting called up and they haven't been, I think, one player in nine years. Stephen said there recently in a, in a um, press conference. I think that might have been Alan Brown, I think. I could be wrong. But basically my point is is that it's great to see the youth players getting promoted and, and being given a chance of being brought in to train with the senior squad and just see how they do. Look, some of these players that are in the squad now may not be... No, they may never get into the squad again. But it's up to their them this time around to come in and see what they can do. That's why I'm delighted players like Leo Connor have been called up to see what he can do in there. And, you know, I think him going back to Celtic this season, you know, hopefully a decent manager comes in and has, gives him a real look. And maybe then he gets this opportunity and starts playing every week for Celtic. Because I'd love that. I think having a... a, a I know, look, it didn't work out for, for Shane... But I would like to see an Irish player starting for Celtic and, and helping Celtic get back and topple Rangers. And I think Leo Connor has the has a right ma- uh, right attitude and mentality, and he can play in a number of different positions. I would love love to see him in there and be a real leader in that Celtic team as well. And then obviously bring that into Ireland camp and stuff like that. So I'm yeah, Lee was Lee was the standout for the under seventeens, under nineteens. And uh, he looked a real prospect, and things probably haven't worked out since the move to to Celtic. And uh, the, well, he was on loan at Tranmere as well, and uh, he did okay there, but seemed to lose his place or wasn't as key at the end of end of the campaign. So I suppose the other key thing to bear in mind is the, the players are there for a week. We can't see what's happening in the training camp, but obviously some players are impressing more than others. And it's that that will heavily influence the Stevens decision. So maybe Stevens starting eleven a week ago could be very different by the time he gets to Thursday night. So it's going to be very difficult for us to predict who's going to start, who's going to play. So because I, I think how the players are going in training this week is going to heavily influence who plays on Thursday and of course next Tuesday. Yeah. I think there's players there, even Ronan Curtis and so on, who still have to make a kind of stamp and prove why yeah. why they should be there all the time. Because I know Curtis, I think he was left out of a match day squad there recently in the last round of games, or else he wasn't selected one or the other. But uh, yeah, the that's that's really it then. Uh, so I'm going three nil. You're going two nil, and uh, we're hoping for an Ireland win and a clean sheet. Yeah, definitely a win. Mm. And uh, yeah, you're going to be at it, so uh, make sure you enjoy it. Uh, anyone who's watching this video, anyway, don't forget to like the video, don't forget to subscribe, give us your prediction in the comments, and apologies that we haven't had the usual build up with the press conference at all. There was a minor mistake that was made, so unfortunately, we just didn't get access to the press conferences this time around, but we will have them hopefully going forward into the Hungry game. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and we'll speak to you all soon. Take care.